welcome. I'm John Townsend and we're doing another special episode here at George Washington's Mount Vernon. Such a tremendous place and this is another in a series that we're doing. If you haven't seen the earlier ones, go back and watch them. They'll help give you context for this episode. We're going to be making something special again with Deb Colburn. Come along as we experience this dish. It's going to be good. Hello, Deborah. I am hope I'm not late. No, John, okay. not at all. Uh, we, uh, we've done fish, three different episodes of fish. Fish sounds like it was just amazingly important to what was going on. Uh, Here at, at Mount Vernon, right. absolutely, it really was. It was not only a major staple for the population, both enslaved, hired, and the Washingtons themselves, but it was his one of his major export businesses. So it's right. where the money's coming from a lot of the time. Right. So what do we, what's, what are we doing today? Though? Today we're going to be working with another vitally important uh, ingredient in our recipe. We're making uh -huh. fried hoe cakes, which are cornmeal pancakes. Okay. And that is Washington's second most important crop at Mount Vernon. Okay. After his cash crop wheat, because corn, and this is white cornmeal ground at the grist mill uh -huh. um, here, corn was being fed to the enslaved population is uh -huh. a major ration. Each each working hand is getting an entire quart of cornmeal daily. So it's like their bread ration. Days it's out of their, the year. Absolutely yeah. right. That's okay. exactly right. Um, and so we're starting with the white cornmeal and water and a little cayenne pepper because we already talked about how much that yeah. is plentiful and it's something we know that they had a taste for and it's going to kind of right. liven up those hoe cakes. You know, sure. you can do it without, but. Why do it without when you can add the spice, right? Okay, sure. So hoe cakes were probably one of the simplest things they were they were normally cooking, right? Absolutely, especially for the slaves. There uh -huh. are more elaborate recipes using cornmeal and to make hoe cakes for, say, the Washington's table. But okay. for the slaves, you're looking at simply adding your meal, okay, your water, and your spices, and you're just going to get it to a pancake batter consistency. So I'm going to start with. Um, probably the equivalent of about oh five cups or so of uh, but it's all just a meal. ratio anyway, but it's right? a ratio right. I, I mean I'd be honest uh, other than weighing things from time to time it's rare that I measure it just right. kind of go by feel sure um, so I'm gonna add the to the cornmeal a little bit of that spice we talked about that uh -huh. cayenne pepper spice them up a little bit and a little bit of salt Get that all mixed in. And then we just add water. Now this is um, warm water. Yeah. And you know, so basically any water that they would have been able to warm up by their fire before they they added it in. The warm water helps the, the cornmeal to rise up a little bit mm. in the skillet. But once we get this into a pancake consistency. So you want it pretty thin. Yeah. It's gonna be ready to put in the skillet. And so this would have been a wonderful thing for the slaves to prepare for themselves quick and easy first thing in the morning in the dark because yeah. they're supposed to be in the fields by sunrise or any of their other um, occupational locations depending on what they were doing for the Washingtons. Um, and you know there's there's some conceptions that and they're, they're misconceptions that Hoe cakes were cooked on hoes out in fields. Ah. That's not that's not where they get that <laughs> <laughs> that term. There yeah. were there were griddles that resembled hoes. Okay. And so that's where that terminology right. is sure. coming from. But you know, you wouldn't want uh, an no. open fire in your field. I don't think so. No, I don't think no so. gentleman farmer would condone that, and Washington certainly wouldn't have. Um, so that's pretty much There we go, a nice thin batter. Look at that. Ready for the skillet. Okay. So. Okay, we're gonna start with our lard. Now that we've got our preheated skillet and our hot cooking coals underneath. All right, now you can pretty much just ladle in. Okay. About the amount that you would use. So just like pancakes, They've got to sizzle up on the bottom and start to bubble a bit on top before we want to flip them. So these guys are ready? Yep. You flipped them over and they look good. They do. So now we're going to go ahead and 
take them on out okay. into our bowl. Hoe cakes. Okay. Or no pancakes. Let's take them to the table. Sounds like a plan. These hoe cakes, they they look special. I don't know if I've ever I don't know if I've ever had hoe cakes with pepper in them before. Okay, so it's a it's because it's a, a corn. Think of some you know a southwestern tradition, same uh -huh, kind of sure. idea, okay. except here being brought up by the enslaved population from uh -huh. West Indies exposure, right. and of course Washington's growing them too. But try one. Okay. Now, okay. They, they are not meant to stand on on their own. Right. You know, you're eating them with something else. So be, you know, be kind. <laughs> no. Uh, bread is, you know, bread can be very, very plain. If you and we eat it all the time, we like it. It's wonderful. This is like a bread, right? Mm -hmm. So it's meant to go with other things. We could probably put stuff on it if we wanted to. We could. You or, could have it with a soup or a stew. Have it with the soup or the stew uh -huh. as an accompaniment. Of the change in texture, they taste great. There's almost no ingredients here. I know it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, you stir some water in, and you got some, you got a little bit of seasoning, and that's it. And salt, right? And salt. That's yeah. it. Yeah, that's it. The flavor is wonderful. Well, I'm glad that you the like it. The texture is great. And now it's a little deceiving because we call them hoe cakes, but and we kind of liken them to pancakes, but they're not light and airy like no. pancakes. They're denser like bread, as right. you pointed out. There's yeah. no <laughs> no real leavening other than what the ground things kind of bring along with them, which is fine. This is this is such an important part of what's going on in the diet in the 18th century, and it connects with these other things going on in other cultures too. Uh, you know, oat cakes that are happening with the Scots and. You know, but we take those those traditions and we come to America and we've got corn. Yep. And what are we going to make? Well, the same thing, corn cakes. That's right. So <laughs> they, they're wonderful. Uh, thank you for uh, for bringing, telling us all about this and, and making them for us. And they, they taste so wonderful and they're they're so fun to watch and experiment and, and understand just how simple they are. Uh, and that anyone can do them. At home, you can make these. Absolutely. So simple. So simple, John. So wonderful. I want to thank uh, everyone, and I specifically want to thank uh, Deborah here uh, and all the folks at Mount Vernon. They have just been so kind and so welcoming to us. And, uh, you know, it's, it's so exciting to uh, connect with these different historic sites, Mount Vernon especially. If you're ever in this area, uh, Northern Virginia, this is a, a tremendous resource, a national resource. We need to be using this. We need to be understanding it. We need to be experiencing it. I call you to do that uh, whenever you have the opportunity and, and to tell other people. Um, and I, I want to thank you for coming along on this video, experiencing this with us as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century. Mm -hmm.